hello there. The data generals are in the office, finally. <laughs> um, now, on the surprisingly likely chance that you've never heard of these since it's now been two years, these are a pair of Data General Nova computers that I own. This is a Data General Nova 4X, and this is a Data General Micro Nova. I picked these up uh, at the beginning of 2020 and uh, wasn't really able to get started on them for a handful of reasons. Now, one of the most important ones that has been the biggest problem is space. Right after I got these, I got my electronics bench, and the room that both of those were in was only 10 feet long, and I ended up putting the electronics bench on the same wall as the Data Generals, and it was so tight that I had towels between the two because they were pushing against the walls because there was no space. So I just literally could not get in to work on these, and they ended up just being stored until a better situation ended up happening for me. And with the office, it did. Now, getting them up into here was uh, kind of a big ordeal that I did not film because uh, I needed help and I don't want to involve other people with filming if I don't have to. So they got up in here. Now, they're not done yet. Uh, the systems are on the rails, but they're not actually attached yet. So we'll be taking care of that today. Um, but they're up here and that's all that matters. So. It is finally time to take the first step and work on getting these data generals functional. Now, for this video, I have set myself five objectives. We're not even going to come close to turning this on. Um, we're a very, very long ways from that, but we're going to take the baby steps to get there. And by this, I mean anything. Um, <laughs> because there are a number of things that I want to do before even attempting to plug in power to make sure that everything is going to survive and work. It's been two years since I got these, and since then I've been trying to keep an eye out for any potential spare parts. And in that time, I've found a grand total of zero, <laughs> which really brings home the point that if I screw anything up here, I'm done. So we're gonna be going really slowly with this. Um, and that's just to be as safe as possible. So the first step in doing that, that I will be taking, or at the time I'm filming this, have taken, will be taking the service histories that I have for both of these systems and scanning and redacting them so that they can be published um, to help other people, but mostly so that I can read them and figure out what's going on with these. Now, I don't have a tremendous setup for scanning documents yet, and uh, this was going to take a long time, so I kind of just did my best with what I have, which is an old HP uh, feeding scanner, but the feed of it uh, would end up leaving black marks on the paper, so I decided not to do that and did these one at a time manually with it, which was more labor intensive, but worth it because it meant that each document was you know damaged as it went through and i was able to tune it and get everything aligned properly so now that that has been done i can actually reference these and see some interesting things like i think there might be some bad sectors on this 25 megabyte hard drive that are not uh marked on the error sheet on top of it and uh, there's a torrid history of logic board replacements through a lot of these components, so that's good to know. But generally, I can now have an idea of what has happened to them, and if you want to see that, I've gone ahead and published them at a link you can view down below if you want to take a look at it. At some point, I'm going to have to transcribe those as well so that I can read them, because I'm going to be honest, the uh, half cursive half print hybrid text in these is really hard to read and I would like to be able to just quickly reference it. All right, now that the one task that's already been accomplished is out of the way, let's talk about the four that I have left to do today. And the first one's pretty obvious. I need to put all the screws back into rails so these things aren't uh, just loose sitting around very dangerously. Uh, the second thing I want to accomplish is to look at all of the power requirements on everything and add everything up to see exactly how much power this thing can draw. Now, 
I'm never going to run both of these at once because well, they're two independent computers. There's no reason to do that. They don't communicate with each other, at least I don't think so, and there's no real reason to do that, at least for me. So I'm pretty sure I'll be able to run at least one of these without too much trouble, but I'm not sure with what components in addition to the computers. So we'll see how that's going to work out. The next thing I want to do is pull out every single card in the actual computers themselves, they are right there and right there, and take really nice high resolution photographs of them so that I know exactly what I have. And then I also want to take pictures of the back planes on the back to see how they're connected because the back planes are, well, on some of them they have literally individual wires connected and I want to make sure that I have really nice high quality images of that in case I mess them up. Uh, so yeah. Then the last thing I'm going to do today will be to remove the Micronova so that I can start working on it. But first, let's go ahead and get these put back together. All right, now to reassemble this, uh, I was going to go ahead and film everything and talk through it, but uh, I skimmed through the last video because, well, I needed to check which drive these screws went in because there are one set of them that are Phillips. Um, and realized that I basically showed you guys all that already. Um, so rather than waste a bunch of time repeating all that when we have other things that we need to get to today, uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and record this from afar and then we'll just fast forward through it. That way we can get on to the new stuff. If you want to see more about how all of these are connected, I did talk about that in the last video and I did try and get some video clips of the connectors and stuff it looked like, but uh, I wanna make sure I get really nice, well-lit, high-quality photos because, yeah, it has the potential to be a big problem. But anyway, uh, we'll get to that in a moment. First, let me get everything put back together. Okay, that is the majority of the work with the assembly done. Um, this still has to go onto the bottom of the Micronova, but that's a little bit of a pain because the floppy drive has to be lifted up or else it uh, scrapes that really badly. Um, so I'm gonna leave that off for the moment because I'm gonna be getting back into this for now. Um, but that's that all put together. So now let's... Uh, Flip these around and take a look at the connectors on the back and how everything electrically goes together. That's just the mechanical part done. This is part of what's really nice about having the office space to put these in and work on now is that I actually have enough room that I can flip them around and show you the backs, which I've never been able to show you before. So these actually are fully finished on the back. They have doors and everything. They're kind of really cool. Um, the last time I'd set these up, I'd left the doors off because they just lift right off. Um, because I knew even when I had the space to set these up initially, uh, that I wouldn't be able to open these and remove the doors if needed. But here I can leave the doors on and then <laughs> put them away. So that's kind of awesome. Uh, so this is the backside, obviously, of all of the components. Now, uh, the way these are set up is kind of weird and interesting. Um, so first off, the Micronova has all of its serial connections uh, run out through this rubber panel, but then this one doesn't. Uh, I'm guessing that this is, well, actually, if I remember correctly, I traced it out, this is, goes to the serial console that is on, the, I think, the CPU card for the 4X. Um, it doesn't actually go to the async card because there's like, there's two serial connections, it's kind of weird. Um, but this is pinched down in this weird metal clamp here. It's not just like a, an, a normal serial connection, but then there are some more that go down here. Um, if I push the uh, 
platter drive forward here. There's a an awful lot of it just kind of blah in there um, that I haven't been able to get to. Looking again back at the uh, service records for this thing, they did a lot of manual work on these serial cables. So I honestly really don't trust any of these and I'm probably gonna have to manually uh, check every single one of them to make sure that they are fully functional. I mean, look at this, it's cut and then spliced with a new cable. Um, multiple times here's another one um again again uh so just oh gosh this is all gonna have to be gone through um not right now because we're nowhere near close enough to needing <laughs> to be worrying about this but that's all that um that's unimportant that's going to three connectors on here um that are all like individual header IDC single row connections on there. So that I'm not too concerned about. Those go and they basically can go one place. And yeah, that's that's about it. This um, unfortunately goes first to what is the first casualty of the move that I discovered. Um, this is supposed to go to a plastic peg up here that I joked about before, but it actually, well, like this part is, it's one of these, but it appears to have broken off of the top up there. Um, I'm going to poke my head down here and see if I can find it. This cable goes over here next to this big wide connector there's her there it's got this weird clamp tensioner thing and then this just plugs in right next to this giant wide cable which goes down to what does that go down to oh i think it plugs into this oh, i'm not putting that on super tight but that's good that'll hold that cable in place and that huge chonker cable there goes to this, which I believe plugs in here. There we go. So it plugs in right there. That's everything electrically reconnected. Well, I can plug the serial ports back in here. This computer has a lot of bits that are just kind of, uh, man, like this connector here, the IDC connector shell, the housing, is one pin too short, but I can look at the ones below it and see that it is actually still correct, so it doesn't really matter. It's just kinda, oh, that's that's not very well done. <laughs> Let's take care of one of the tasks that we have. Um, let me push this forward so I can see the back of the floppy drive a little easier. Um, Let's add up the power budget. Uh, so first off, we have a 6103 is, I think all of these are 120 volt. So that's 2.6 amps. And then below that is the actual 4X. Power supply on that is rated for, oh my gosh, 12.7 amps. Whoa. That can't be right. This, that's a whole outlet. That's more than a whole outlet. That's at 120 volts AC. Whoa. Uh, this is a 6045. It's rated for three amps. This is also a 6045. It should be the same. It is. And then the floppy drive on the bottom, 3.5. What's the model? 6039. Uh, Micro Nova power supply. I didn't easily see a current rating. Um, way in the back there, three, no. Is that, what is that? 20 volt, 240 volt. Oh, okay, so this one's actually rated based on the voltage, which is better, I think is the problem with that one. At 100 volts, it'll 
draw a uh, five amp or 120 volt, it's five amp. And then at 240, it's three amp. So we're gonna put five amp down for that one. Which makes me think that this <laughs> could probably be divided by two. <laughs> Cause, uh, oh no, I think I see it. It's not 12.7, it's 12 comma seven. So it's 12 for 120 volts and then seven for 240. Holy moly. Uh, so I can bump this down to 12, <laughs> it says 12.7. Oh man, that's a lot of power. Oh, oh, oh my gosh. Ah, uh, whoa. <laughs> this, has, this has a fuse rated for seven amps. So that's weird. They expect really high current peaks, I guess. Good grief. Seriously, 12 amps? This is the uh, AC power input, if I remember correctly. Um, you know what? You haven't been able to get a good look at this. <laughs> this is why I don't want to just power this thing on. If I unscrew this, you can see these ridiculously huge caps in there. They are beyond enormous. Um, oh, look, another, oh, this is the serial console. This is the one that goes to the CPU card. That's that one for sure. Okay. I'm glad I had that tucked up in there safely. Um, yeah, my gosh, that's 12 amps. How? 15 amp fuse. Oh my gosh. This is only the AC filtering, by the way, I think. There might be a transformer right here because there's actually a power supply card underneath of the computer card itself. Um, we'll take a look at that. But, whoa. It's so much more than I was expecting. <laughs> so, the Micronova. It's total power, 6.5, 11 and a half amps. Okay. US power outlet amperage rating. On the website homedepot.com, they say, most homes in the US are wired with a combination of 15 amp and 20 amp, 120 volt circuits. So 15 amps. I might be able to run this one unit off of a single breaker the computer might be able to run off of a single breaker on that one. I don't have access to the breakers in the office. So that's a problem. Uh, huh. <laughs> so one thing about these, they have breakers right here. Um, this one appears to be rated 20. This one is a 15, a 15, and a 20. All right. Um, I could rewire the internals here because this takes a 240 input, if I remember correctly. Um, I could rewire it to 120 for the internal power box or just add a different power box inside for a 110 hookup um, and leave the original intact. Um, and then either add my own breaker box or replace that one and then wire it with a breaker that is less than uh, what the outlet should be. <laughs> so that's, I think that's my plan here um, for running the whole thing all at once. But I can very safely run the Micronova by itself. So at least there is that. Um, now, let me just state really quick, the current ratings are a maximum. They're not uh, what it will actually draw. So it's possible that I could run that my, the Nova 4X off of a US outlet and maybe other stuff, but with the peaks, I, d I don't know. Um, it could like try and pull all that current super fast, especially with those humongous caps. So that's gonna be something I have to test. Uh, I will probably want to make a 10 amp circuit breaker box that I can put onto a workbench and then try and fire it with that first to see how much it peaks at drawing because the 12 amps, it may never reach that, um, especially not fully populated. So 
I could be good, but it's something that I'm going to have to experiment with as I get further along in the restoration process. But I think that is it for the back of this. So we've got the mechanical parts put back together. We've calculated the power budget. We've put all the electrical connections back together. Oh, I actually haven't done the electricals on this one yet. Uh, this is pretty simple. I think I'm going to go ahead and not connect these because I want to attempt removing the Micronova today. Um, because I would like that to be the first step on working on something because I can't begin trying to restore the power supplies and make sure that everything's good if they're sealed away in the computer cases. So I think I'm gonna leave this one disconnected actually. So go with that. Uh, this is literally, that's it. That's all it's gotta be reconnected. So that's not that difficult. Now, before I take anything out, I'm gonna go ahead and take a whole bunch of pictures inside of here uh, just so that I know where everything goes because I don't think I could figure this back out <laughs> if I needed to. Uh, some of this will be pretty easy to keep track of because, I mean, these cables are all like hard wired and managed into place. Oh, those connectors are slightly loose. That's terrifying. Um, but then there's other things like, well, the cable for the console just plugs in here and it's slightly off center and I don't actually know which one it goes to directly. So we're gonna go ahead and photograph everything like that. <laughs> Okay, that was well worth doing. Also revealed some more things to me. Uh, way, way deep in the Micronova are two giant caps, kind of like what are in that, uh, that are buffed together on a bar. I mean, those probably are on a bar in there as well, but I hadn't seen those before. So yeah, there's gonna be plenty to reform in this as well. And yes, I will be doing reforming um, I'll get into that later though. Okay. Now we can actually start the uh, card documentation process and we'll go ahead and do that with the Nova 4 here. Ah. We're going to take out every single one of those and get some really nice pictures of them. Okay, before I get started with taking pictures and handling the cards, I'm going to reach over here and touch a screw that is connected to ground. I know because I've built up a charge and shocked myself on it. So I now know that I'm grounded and that I'm safe to touch these. People have been concerned about ESD damage on these, which is a very real concern, but I do take precautions. But Let's go ahead and get started. Now, I don't know when this was taken out of service or why, which I would really like to know, but I don't. And uh, the thing about that is that when I opened this last time, oh, it's gone. What did I do with it? I found some fasteners in a bag in here and now they're missing. Well, that's interesting. Hopefully I knew what they were and put them somewhere. If you look at this older picture I took, you could see them there, but now I don't know where they went. Okay. All right, I will fess up to something here uh, as well. These are gonna be pretty dirty, some of them, like this one is. Um, I don't really have a good way of cleaning these things here at the office yet, so I will be figuring that out later, but I'm still just gonna go ahead and photo document them for now. So let's uh, get this one done. It seems like overall there are a lot of screws missing from this computer. <laughs> from before I even laid a finger on it. Like there should be four more screws holding this plate on than there are. And I can tell by the wear markings they'd been there at one point. All right, I wasn't really happy with the picture quality I was getting, so I set up a really horrible ghetto photography rig I made a while back <laughs> that uses a monopole and a counterweight. 
um, but you can see on the LCD out there, it does actually work. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and continue using that in all of its horribleness. <laughs> I'm just going to take every picture three times since I can't really check them. Okay, that is the last card documented. Man, having the camera on the stand made a huge difference in how sharp those pictures are. That was worth taking the time to set up. Okay, that is uh, everything put back together and documented with uh, some minor exceptions on the front of the Micronova chassis. And it's time to take that first step and remove the Micronova. Now, you already have seen, or I've at least put up a video about, uh, how I'm going to work on that. But let me bring it over just to mention it again. Space has been my biggest issue for working on the data generals because I can't afford to take one component out and have it eat up one whole workbench that I need to be able to do other tasks on. So this workbench is dedicated to nothing except for data general stuff. That's why the terminal is on there. And also, something I haven't actually uh, shown you guys yet that I picked up, uh, I mentioned that there have been zero spare parts available uh, in the two years since I've had this. Well, I did find this. This is an official data general, data general terminal tester kit, uh, which is gonna be kind of fun to check out and also came with some spare cables. So that will be cool to use with my Dasher D200 when I get that going. But yeah, terminal tester kit, pretty sweet. But for now, I'm gonna be pulling out the Micronova and placing it right here where it will live until it lives again. Okay, now I haven't actually attempted to remove either of these computers from their uh, chassis because they're screwed in, not held in with rails. Um, so they don't easily come out. But I think the Micronova will be pretty easy to come out because for one, it's right on top of this hard drive, which is on a rail. So what I can do is I can unscrew it and then it'll just drop onto that, which is on a rail. And then I can pull it out. And from there, I can see if it's actually light enough, I can lift it. Um, I think it will be, but I don't actually know. <laughs> um, but that, there's a less risk of it falling because this one, uh, no, that one is actually just over a big empty spot. Uh, so I would have to get something under it to catch it because I mean, yeah, there's nothing there. So ah, that one's not as easy to work on it. Also, now that I know about the 12 amps, good grief. I'm not even sure how I'm gonna power that. Uh, but this one is well within reason. So. Let me try and get it out and we'll see what happens. So I'm just gonna let the camera run here as whatever happens here happens. <laughs> there are no screws here on the front. Um, there are some on the inside, <laughs> on the back though. So I'm gonna have to get in from the back. That's fun. Um, and then I'm guessing this will swing open. Yeah, and it exposes screws up front. On that side. This side, it looks like I'm gonna have to remove the door to be able to remove it from the chassis. Cool. All right, I set up my Nikon over there so you can see whatever is gonna happen over here as well, because this is gonna be interesting. Yep, there are the bolts. The thing on the other side is just gonna come loose. It's like a flat metal bar in there. Uh, so I'm gonna have to pull this out so I can catch that. Uh, I have no idea how someone managed to actually install this thing. 
I'm gonna take the top off. <laughs> I have not done this yet. I can barely see the top of the rail there. <laughs> Man. Either these are big externally mounted capacitors. I think more likely this thing has some kind of battery. That's weird. <sighs> this is not looking fun though. This is the problem. You see that? hole right there that's on a metal bar if i start loosening that screw you'll see that metal bar should yeah moved see it how it moved yeah it's not attached to anything and that's what the threads are going into as soon as i loosen that screw all the way that bar is just going to fall and then I have no idea how I'm going to hold this thing back in place. Because <laughs> that's what's holding it up. So this thing is nowhere near as easy to remove as I thought. Or, well, I should, it won't be that difficult to remove. It'll be nearly impossible to put back. That's the problem. Oh, man. How does this get solved? How do they even put it in there? This side's easy. That's the pff, super duper easy. There's four screws. I'm going to undo them. It's going to fall. And the screws are retained using these clips that hold the fastener nuts in place. They're cage nuts. On the front, though, they're not. <laughs> How? Okay, some minor progress. Um, if you see down in here, I managed to get a twist tie that goes all the way through that piece down there through the hole that will hold that one up i don't know if i can do that on this side though because i don't see because that one has a hole that's visible maybe down there uh let me try feeding one through that because that will at least hold those up i don't think it'll hold that one in position but this one i think will be held in position by that so i can probably pull off that side and then the ones that are down here, um, I can reach that. I could probably also put a twist on that. And then same thing, Oop. same thing over here. Uh, I could probably reach that one and hold it up or put it back up manually. But uh, that at least lets me hold those in place. Let me try and get that second one. because so I think I can maybe do that. Yeah, that's through the hole, but then I have to figure out how I'm gonna get it back around and hold it in. Maybe if I, curve this tighter shot with a camera there because you're gonna see i got this in that hole and then i can hopefully grab that and pull it through oh that might be game over here i think i got it <laughs> okay i think that's enough Man, is the process of just removing the computer so much more difficult than I would have guessed. Whew, all right. Uh, again, I can touch the bottom one, so I'm not that concerned about those. Uh, I will go ahead and remove those right now, actually, while I'm here, because I can hold on to that and catch it. And that is my problem piece. <laughs> Stupid rails without the captive screws. Jeez. Grab the other one here. And hold the other one while I pull it out. Okay. Then I'll put the computer or drive back under it. Then I can pull the top ones out. Slow progress, but progress. Ooh, don't want to jam that. Okay, that'll work. 
get those fully removed there. That one stayed in place. But I could put that screw right back in right now if I wanted to. This one will do even better because it's hanging rather than being held upright. I see that one held in as well, which means this should be loose. Yep, it moves up and down. Okay, let me get the screws out of the back. It slides, yes. And it didn't feel ridiculously heavy. All right, let's give this a shot. What do we got holding it up? Uh, there's power cable going down into this mess and ow. That's it, disconnected. Got this big weird grounding strap that's not actually connected to anything. Um, I think that might be it. And I can lift it and pull it. Oh, there's a minor problem. I'm gonna have to take off those weird extension plates and whatever that capacitor battery thing is, is just gonna have to be carried over there because there's bolts sticking out of them <laughs> that are catching. Okay, batteries based on weight. Good grief, why are there SLAs in there? Whatever. All right. Let's keep sliding this out. That's this. Oh, that's that is very very carryable. All right, that's all of that. I'm gonna lift and bring this forward so I don't have to drag it and try to slide this out nicely. And get a little more space up front. That's it, it's all free. If I can get the stupid batteries to sit on top of this, then I can carry it. That's it. Watch this. That's the Data General Micro Nova. It's out, I can work on it now. Whoa, I'm excited. Oh, that, that feels so good to have that out and sitting there. I really didn't realize the whole time that I've owned this how much of an impediment it would be just to leave the computers in the cases. Having it out really kind of changes things. I can take it apart and start learning about how it works. I can test the power supply independently. I don't have to figure out all the weird wiring quirks while it's deep in the case. Like seriously, just to get to the back part of this thing is probably like that far into the case you'd have to reach an arm into and around stuff. So this, this really makes it more manageable. This computer set has overall just been so overwhelming. Every single time I've tried to start anything on it, it's just a, a big, project to get working on and a, an elaborate slow process that has to be done to do it right. So don't expect any updates anytime soon. I'm going to do this at my own pace and it can't overrule other projects because I don't know when or if this is ever going to work. So I need to work on this a little at a time. I will though probably 
stream disassembling this at some point, uh, or at least looking at how it can be disassembled. Um, and you can find me on Twitch. I'll link that in the description. I've been doing a bunch of streams over there, actually, that you can find posted on the second channel. And yes, normal videos are still going up on the main channel, despite how many stream recordings I put on the second channel. There's been a ridiculous amount of confusion over that when it really shouldn't be an issue, but here we are. Um, but I'm looking forward to getting started on this. I just, uh, I really have to go slow from here. So having this out, huge step. I'm very excited to see it sitting there. Seriously, that is, that, there's a lot going on, but there are a lot of other steps I need to take now. Like, uh, I don't have running water in the office. There's a bathroom I can go visit, but that means that things like getting the 30, 40 years of dust off of here are gonna have to be planned um, how I'm gonna do that. Cleaning the cards. I'm thinking I need to get a ultrasonic cleaner for that and one that has a variable sweep frequency um, because I've read you can have resonances that can damage things. So there are a lot of things that I need to consider how to do. Um, and there's a lot of documentation that I need to do because Data general documents are very hard to get, um, so finding any old service manuals or schematics or even just user manuals is practically impossible. So I'm going to have to write my own based off of what I see here nearly. But I will welcome any that anyone else has that they can scan or put up somewhere that it can be accessed because it would be really nice to get official documentation. I just have not seen any. So that is it for now though. So, uh, this is a really big step and I'm very happy with this progress. This feels so, so good to take that thing out. And I'm also kind of glad I can stop moving them around for a while because my muscles are kind of tired after uh, all that. So uh, yeah, but I hope you guys enjoyed this and are as excited as I am on the next steps. Please don't ask me when it's going to happen all the time though. Um, I'm just saying that directly because I have received so many messages and comments and emails and things about when's the next data general video going to be. The answer is I don't know um, because it's going to be dependent on how the discovery process of this goes. There'll probably be a stream first but and then there'll be a stream recording on the second channel, but I don't know when the next main proper data general video is gonna be. My next step here, actually, <laughs> now that I think about it, is uh, going to be setting up a process for reforming capacitors, because there are a couple of giant ones right under there, and this is the power supply, and I'm going to need to reform those. Um, and I will state right now, reforming capacitors does not fix them, reforming capacitors prevents damage to good capacitors. So before you all tell me that I just need to replace the capacitors, that's not what it is doing. Uh, reforming the capacitors will just give them their best possible chance to not go bad if they aren't bad already. They could be bad and reforming will reveal that. But uh, those giant soup can capacitors that I showed you inside the 4X system, yeah, those are like 30 or $40 before the pandemic. Uh, so, I'm not really sure how much they're gonna be now, and I estimate that there's two of those in each thing in here, and there are two removable platter drives, one fixed disc, one floppy drive, two computers, so that's 12 of those caps at potentially 50 bucks each? Yeah, so that could be bad. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna reform them first and we'll see what happens. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I need to figure that process out. I think I know how I wanna do it, but I have so many to do that I kinda wanna write some software to control my HP test gear over HPIB or RS-232 and uh, try and do it that way. So that could be kind of interesting because I'm pretty sure I can automate it. So see how that goes. But uh, that's a future plan, so. <laughs> yeah, that is it for the moment, though. I really am excited to have done this, and I hope you guys enjoyed this look at the Data Generals finally being in the office and taking that first step of getting something out to take a look at it. I know before I said the terminal would be first, and I think I'm going to do both of these at the same time is how that's going to go, because there were more caps that needed reformed in the terminal, so yeah. But that is it for the moment. If you want to support the channel, uh, there are t-shirts you can find below the video, or you can look on the Amazon wish list. 
Uh, there was, was, at the time I was recording this, a fire extinguisher in case things don't go well. <laughs> um, that would be really nice to have. But that is it for the moment, and I will see you next time.